Hello, everyone. My name is Tiffany. I'm a tipsy artist. Today, we are learning how to paint this beautiful painting. Um, this is one of my originals from a while back. This is a lovely Highland cow with a barn. I'm going to try to get it to where you don't have the glare. Um, I also sell it as prints at Michael's stores, and um, I do have some on my website as well at tipsyartist.com. So I wanted to give you a little look at that too. If you do order the print on Michael's, it'll look like this when it comes to you. It's nicely packaged and everything. And I do have a certificate of authenticity. Uh, but today we're going to go and paint this with the painting kit that I offer on our website. So that's what we'll be doing today. So I wanted to give you a quick visual on this. We'll have this nearby as well to look at. And let's go ahead and talk about the traceable. So we make our painting kits very easy for beginners. So I do have this traceable here for you. And this is going to be the first step when you do the class with me. So um, we've got this. Let me talk about the transfer process. So your kit comes with the canvas, 9 by 12. And I've worked ahead a little bit, but this gives you an idea of how we start. But you're going to start by placing the transfer paper um, basically on the surface area. And we're just gonna tape up here at the top. So I'm gonna place the transfer paper down first. Again, only taping at the top. And it's just centered in the middle of the canvas. Then we're going to take the traceable and just center it in the middle of the canvas. And again, just tape right here and here. I like to leave the sides uh, free and loose so that as I trace, I can lift up and check my work and make sure that I get all of those details in. That's really important um, because once you are, well, actually, once you pull this away from the canvas, you're not you're never able to line it back up perfectly again. So you really want to continue to look, check your work, make sure you get all those little details in. All right, I'm going to go ahead and place this back over here to the side. Um, we're going to switch camera views over to a lovely aerial view that's really nice and up close so that you can see me um, work up close while I work and paint. So here we go. We're going to go ahead and get started with that. And let's see. Okay. All right. So let's see here. I'm going to take off my hat because I want to make sure that you don't see it coming over the canvas. <laughs> That has happened before, and I want to make sure that does not happen again. All right, so let's go ahead and talk about all the tools that we have here. All right, so we have, um, of course, we talked about this. This is your canvas, uh, transfer paper, traceable. Um, your equipment that you'll have with you it comes with your tools here. And we have those off to the side. You will have a brand new uh, package of paints. Mine are open because as you can see, this is really kind of a nice little benefit. Um, I've already done one whole painting with these paints and you can see still how incredibly full they are. There, there's a lot of paint in here. So they definitely are very long lasting. Uh, so I'm actually using this for another painting. So that's awesome. And I've got my little visual here and then we've got our plates. I've got a little bit of a head start um, with some titanium white and some lamp black. And the only thing that you will really need to go and get uh, will be some water. You need to make sure and get some sort of a, a cup or I have a little bucket here full, full of water. So I have that to clean our brushes. We have our little family of brushes here. So let's give them a sweet little introduction. We have mama and then we have little buddy and then we have little bit. Um, we also have these lovely tools. This is your pencil and your permanent marker. And then there is also a palette knife with this kit here. All right, so let's talk about how to trace first. So we talked about how to adhere it to your canvas. Once you have that in place, then you just take your pencil and you basically just draw right over the top of every single line that you see. So I've done that. If there's a little bit of shading, uh, this is an important note. You want to turn your pencil over to the side and just kind of do a rub like this over that shading. That will create a beautiful simulation that looks just like what you see here with the pencil. So that's really nice. Same thing here, a little bit over to the side, a little bit of that shading. 
Okay, like that. And then there's a little bit of shading in here. And within this part, it's not that big of a deal to have it look too much like the authentic version. You can actually just, you know, color in like this if you want to. That might be a little bit easier for you to have that precision in those darker areas. And you're going to be painting over this anyway, but it's just a nice reminder of where that shading does occur. And it's easier on the eye as you start to transform this with paint. Um, so again, be really careful with the detail here. Make sure and get all these little lines. Make sure you check all of your work. I have worked ahead with this trace and also with the permanent marker. We're going to discuss that decision making with what I did with permanent marker here in just a second. I am done. I've checked my work really well. So I'm going to go ahead and remove this. And I can just throw this in the trash. We're done with that. All right, so let's talk about permanent marker work here. So we had a really beautiful iconic shape of the barn and then also with the Highland cow here. Uh, so for the most part, everything that is, that I really wanna maintain that exact shape, I did a hard line over the top. And like I'm gonna do, I saved a little bit of this so that you could see me work in, like I'm gonna come in over the top of the hair since that's dark up above. Um, but see this, I'm gonna show you what I left light. So some of this detail I left light because you can see in the visual here, it's pretty light around the face there. So I don't want to have this hard black line that I'm having to paint over and trying to cover up since it's all very light in here. But so this little bit of line there, that just will help me a little bit as I go and start to make a decision to paint it with color, that gives me a reference of where that little line is that comes in to kind of frame out the bridge of the nose here and the hair that comes in on top. Uh, but everything else kind of blackened in. If you wanna take it a step further, like up here, you can see how that shading is done. So, you know, it is a dark gray, but if you'd like, sometimes this helps people to go ahead and darken in this little area, it is shaded. You can either shade it in with a pencil or you can shade it in with the black. Uh, same thing here. If you want to, you know, shade all this in, I'm just going to do a little sketch because I'm going to be coming in over that with that dark charcoal. So we're all good. We're ready to start. Did not do any of this floral work because it's very light and it's made more with just a touch of the brush, not really a shape uh, that's just actually too precise. So we are good now on use of this. Um, I will say too, one other little hint, keep this you know handy. Um, whenever you're done painting, you can continue to use your permanent marker to do fun details with like the eyes and the nose, accentuate things um, as a finishing touch. But uh, caution is that whenever uh, you do use that, make sure that your paint is completely dry because if you use a permanent marker on the wet paint, it'll basically just kill the marker and you'll have, you'll have to throw it in the trash. So um, always make sure as long as you use this on dry paint, you'll have a nice long life with it. So we're good with this for right now. We're good with this for right now. We're going to place these off to the side. I'm not using the pout knife for a little bit. Um, I'll use that here in a, in, towards the end. And actually, let me go ahead and place this a little bit off to the side over here. All right. Uh, plates that are paint nearby. Again, make sure you get that water, super important. We're using acrylic paint today. It does set up and dry pretty quickly. So you always wanna make sure that you have a place to rest your brushes um, until you get a chance to clean them um, or, and again, have that handy nearby to clean quickly. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and get started with our sky here. All right, so I'm gonna use the Mama brush. Your brush will be new, so it might be a bit stiff. So I recommend placing it into the water a little bit, just a quick little swirl, and then go ahead and do a little press, release that excess water there. And then I am going to start, we have our white, this is titanium white. And then we've got some of our, oops, that's wrong, but um, lamp black. And I want a little touch of some blue nearby too. That starts to happen in our sky here. So I've got some cobalt blue. We'll do a little 
dollop of that off to the side so that we can play with that a little bit. And I'm also going to pick up a little tiny amount of some ultramarine blue. Okay, that off to the side. And we're good. All right, so I'm going to start with a big dollop of the white. I push this off to the side here. Teeny little corner touch of the black, very tiny amount. We're going to mix that in. I want to make a really light, light gray. So I'm going to get more white to that. Very light gray. And I'm going to start to work this into my sky here. You can also add a little bit of water to that. That'll help that paint really flow into the surface area of the canvas. So again, continue kind of pushing that light gray back and forth, little crisscrosses of strokes, just back and forth. I'm going to alternate back in with just pure white. Again, just push back and forth, little textural cross strokes. Again, light gray here. And the pure white. And remember, a little bit of water in there, too, can also help push that paint through the background. Now, as we get near the barn, we're going to have to do some cut-in work. So I'm going to go into that really light, light gray. We're going to use the edge of the brush. So I'm going to hold the brush a bit more like you'd hold a pencil. That'll give you a thin line edge to do your cut-in work right next to the edge. Just follow the length of that line all the way down. Follow it all the way down here. And then once we've got that cut in work, then we can start to be a little bit more free and loosen up with our brush strokes. This little tiny crisscrosses back and forth. Kind of swish, swish, swish back and forth. And I'm going to bring in a little bit more white. Just kind of swish that in back and forth. And a little bit more of that pure white. And kind of crisscross that in back and forth. Create that lovely texture over the top. All right, very nice. Uh, now what we're gonna do is we're gonna come in with a, a deeper, um, darker, more of a charcoal gray. So a little bit more black and we're gonna start to kind of put a little bit of a line here. It's almost like a little bit of a mountain view in the background. It almost makes you feel like a little bit of Yellowstone happening back here. Just pretend Rip is in the barn. Keeping everything safe. The rest of that story, I'll just leave your imagination. Have fun with that. All right. Let's let that happen. All right. We're just going to continue to bring in that little amount of. Just kind of like side strokes in here. This is that charcoal gray. I'm just kind of sweep it side to side. Now let's go ahead and pick up a little teeny amount of that cobalt blue. Just a little touch in there, a little touch in here. 
The gray is still wet, so that little bit of cobalt blue kind of softly touches into that color, softly blends. You can do a little tiny touch of that ultramarine blue. This little light drag of that. A little corner of that ultramarine blue and let lightly kind of drag it across. All right, really beautiful. Okay, we are uh, going to, this is all just barn from here going down. We have a little bit more landscape to work in here. So I'm going to, let's see, get of this viridian. And I still have my brush loaded up with a lot of this gray. So I'm gonna do a little bit more gray here and that meridian. I'm gonna push those two together. It's gonna give me a much softer, lighter green. Let's see, I need to warm this up just a tad. So we're gonna add a little bit of some yellow ochre to it. So do a little touch of that yellow ochre that's going to warm it up just a little bit. And we're going to pull that in just underneath the barn. And then I'm going to take my little Betty and I'm going to do a soft little just softly kind of fade the two right there together. So this is a dry brush. It's kind of softly blend that into the gray. It's a soft fade there. And then just let him rest in the water a little bit. And we're gonna work that little pretty color all the way down. What the ground level is. We'll side swipe here. We'll squeegee out the rest of that paint. Use that later. I'm going to rinse out. Now let's get some more yellow ochre. And we're going to do a bigger job of that to the side here. The white. Mix that in with that yellow ochre here. Have to work this in to the ground level. Soft little, it's a little bit more white and soft little fade. That little buddy again, I want to make sure I'm dried off really well. Softly back. So I'll fade between those two, kind of warm that green up and more that lighter gold ochre. There's a soft transition between the two. Took a little bit of water and remove that from that one. Right. Now let's go ahead and go back in with a lot more of the white and the ochre. And we're just going to Position that into all of our ground here. And yellow ochre, white. And we're just going to do a little bit of a crisscross back and forth. Work in that beautiful groundwork. Get yellow ochre. Titanium white, this cross back and forth. Let's 
coming up over the little feet here. We do have all those flowers to work in. I'm going to do that I'm closer to the end here. I'm just going to fit this in. Okay, so this one. Okay, let's just position that in and crisscross back and forth. Okay. All right. So I made sure I got in between all those little cute legs in there. And yeah, if you want, let's see, let's do a little bit of some gray now too. Just kind of sweep that in. Now the paint's still a bit wet. Just gonna do a little bit of shadow in here. Let's do some vertical strokes. Gonna sweep that up. Make sure it's real soft. And this is our light gray. It's going to be in a nice little base for future, like a shadow that's going to come in underneath those flowers right now. This is going to be our first step. All right. That is super lovely. Let's rinse out. Dry off. All right, let's go ahead and start to work on that barn a little bit. So we're going to do a dark charcoal gray to begin with. I'm gonna use my little buddy brush. We've got our lamp black and our titanium white. I'm gonna mix those two together. That darker charcoal gray. I'm going to go ahead and work this into that roof edge. What's nice is the little buddy brush is just pretty much the perfect width to kind of fit right into that thing there. So that is lovely. And then you can also turn it like this, use that line edge for a little more precision work into that shape, a little bit more white, kind of work into it. Mm -hmm. Also use your little bit brush to get a little bit more precision to work in this little tiny areas. Put that in the water for just a second. And I'm looking down. It's really fine. All 
right, so now I'm gonna do little chunky sections of the barn too in this darker charcoal gray. So that kind of work down, just do little pulls here and pull up. Again, this is a little bit more black and white, that darker charcoal gray. Pull down little vertical strokes here. I'm doing every other one sometimes just for that. It skips a little bit. A little bit of black, a little bit of the white. And this is just old weathered wood. So it, you know, it doesn't have to be just super precise. Wood has been, it's seen its better day. You know what I mean? It's kind of been out the weather a lot. It's, it's fun to paint, it really is. A lot of forgiveness because there's just not perfect anymore. There's a lot of beauty in that. Careful and precise as I get near that horn. I think work into that dark gray area, but. And then in this section, there's a little bit of blue in there too. So I picked up a little bit of that cobalt blue. Look around that little horn there, be careful with that. And we'll do that cobalt blue. A few sections of that. Let's add a little bit of white to that too, kind of sticky it a little bit. It's a nice little slate color. I'm going to rinse out on that just for a little bit and let's go ahead and uh, do what's black or really dark charcoal. Let's go ahead and do a little bit more black here. So I've got that semi black and then. There's a little bit right there. And a little bit of that here. And a little bit right here. Right there. It's all right. Mine. Take a little bit here and do that charcoal gray again, dark charcoal, white, black, do a little pearl, add a little bit of water to that, make it fluid, and fill that in.
Areas. Scopes of the dark purple over that black. Vertical scopes on that. And then little poles in here of that. And then take a little bit of that white, and I'm just going to still use a little bit of brush on like your light drags of white down this. I'm going to put a little bit of water to that. Drags down this side. And there's definitely a little bit of play back and forth. Like I'm gonna do a little bit of this white going down and then a little bit of this blue and white. And then I might even come back in with that darker gray here in a little bit, just to kind of softly work the wet paint back and forth. And they softly blend in with each other since that initial coat of the darker charcoal has already dried. So then I want it to a little more blended in. So a soft play between the two. I'll pull this roof line down just a little bit. And go to the edge. That blue and highlight there. That charcoal. This white accent. It's looking really pretty. I want to rinse out. Go back in with little buddy. We're going to do that real light, light gray again. It's a lot of white, tiny little touch of the lamp black. And then we're going to work this into those other sections of wood here. Just kind of vertical strokes. And then I'm going to come back in and make sure if you are feeling like you're losing some of those lines, I'm going to reinforce those a little bit with some of that darker gray as we start to paint over it. And a little bit of strokes, that lighter gray. And every once in a while, there can be a little hint of different colors in there, too. So you can pick up a little bit of that viridian or that yellow ochre, do a little bit of yellow ochre in there. It's kind of nice little accent. And 
There's also a little touch of pink that starts to come out. Just really quickly. That one's warming up in here. We'll take a little jack a little bit. We also have a touch of, okay, can I get some crimson red? I'll make sure I have that handy. Just for that chance of paint that's going to come in and again. Here. Little touches of that, pull that down into the shape. Very subtle. There's a little bit more over here to me. I'm going to take a little more of that white and go over here. Work that in those little sections of wood. And if you go every other piece of wood too, it kind of helps keep those slats uh, separate, differentiated in there. it again using the brush more on a line edge as we're starting to work this in More of that cobalt blue with the white. And just again, lots of vertical pulls on this with those different colors. All this white with that yellow ochre. We're going to cross here and cross. And a little bit more of that light gray. Right down here. Rinse out. Right off. Let's go ahead and come in with our little bit brush. 
perhaps more white and a little bit of that gray. A little bit of coral. And we're going to do some of these little details here. With the woodwork, the highlights on the woodwork that come in. That was a water, make that paint more fluid. Those sections. I'm going to put a gray here. And the touches. And then I'm going to twirl into that darker gray. We're going to call it that. Pull into that darker charcoal. And a little bit of that darker charcoal here all the way across. Try to put a water, make that paint more fluid, do a little line of that here. And a little bit of water really helps help make the paint more fluid. And some of those darker shadow lines. A little bit more of that shadow. I'm going to pull that down, those vertical strokes. A little bit of the darker gray in here. Let's sweep that in. A little bit more of that black in there. I'm going to follow this down the line here. Get a bit of water, a little bit of that darker charcoal gray with a little hints of black, and follow this line, and then kind of do little pulls down where the line separates the wood. And the same thing here on this side. Let's see, put that gray down on the edge. The sweeps up here too. And right next to that sweet little cow, we have the white and then soften that. So 
again, just make sure you're playful with it and kind of have fun with those vertical strokes. I don't think you have to worry about being too precise. It's definitely a little bit of an abstraction here with the painted wood. All right, so it's looking really pretty. And we've got some, uh, you know, some stronger shades of those pastels in there. You can always make that more subtle too, if you want. You know, just take a little bit of water and a little bit of white or that light gray, and you can kind of softly come in over that, kind of, you know, make it a little bit more neutral too. So, you know, it's just up to you. It's if you want to make it a little bit more vibrant with the color pop, you can, or a little bit more subtle too. All right, now we're going to go ahead and work in some of the color on the cow. Um, I'm going to go ahead and start to work on the horns first. I'm going to use my little bit brush. We're going to do a very light gray to begin with. And we're going to work into this one. A little bit of water. A little coral. And the same thing on the other side, all the way into the point. Right into that little horn here. All right, at the under part, you can grab a little bit more of this black. So do a little twirl here into the black and a little bit of water. We'll twirl. And we're going to make sure that this black is and that dark charcoal gray is the under defining part of the horn. And same thing here on this side. Take that blackish dark charcoal and go in underneath, just like that. That's going to do that accent there. Rinse out, dry off. Now we're going to come in some of that yellow ochre. Do a little twirl. And we're going to come right next to that. It's going to do a nice little soft fade. Yellow ochre, we're going to go right above that dark charcoal line, soft fade. Rinse out, dry off. Now we're going to come in with some white. And we're going to follow the line of that horn top and just do the white right at the top. And white right at the top, follow it all the way down. And that's going to do that nice little white line accent at the top. Nice. Okay, now white with gold ochre. Not a lot. I'm going to start to work in this little hair here. Okay. A little white there. Tiny little dash lines. And then lift off with a right hand.
same triangle, the ashes kind of go from like this side, a little bit of an angle this side, a little bit of, you know, this side. And then try to and now sweep it a little curl. A little curl. And there's just a little tiny amount that kind of comes up here on the tip, tip top in the center. Let's grab a little bit more water to get that a nice fine point. All right now, I'm going to do a bit of that soft white right down the middle of the nose. Got a little hint of gray in there. Put that right in over the top center. I'm going to come back in with a little bit of this dark charcoal. I'm going to work in. A little bit of dry brush happening. So I'm going to work in a little bit of that dark charcoal right over the top of the hair here. Do a soft little. And now that that is nice and wet, then I can have a little bit more of a softly blended, a little bit of that light white hair that comes in over the top. I'm also going to do a little bit of some lemon yellow. Just titanium bright. Let's grab a little bit of water in the tube. Let's twirl. And again, just kind of work this in over the top center of the bridge of the nose. Okay, now we have some warmer tones that we need to start working in. So I'm going to grab my burnt sienna here. I'll take my plate a little bit to this side. I imagine we'll also end up using a little bit of some raw umber. We still have uh, quite a bit of our yellow ochre here, so that's going to come in handy. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and dip into that raw umber just a little bit, and I'm going to do that little bit of shading in the underneath. This is that ear. So it kind of feels like you do a little parentheses, parentheses, right? And through here, parentheses, parentheses. Same thing here on this side. Get that little bit of shading in. Raw well, umber, let's get a little bit of shading in here so we don't lose that dark shadow that we did. A little bit of shadow in here. Just kind of following that where I see it in the picture. So we're going to start with that shadow first. Follows the leg a little bit in there. And then in here, a lot of a darker fur comes in. Okay. 
I'm going to cut a little bit around the face so that face shape stays nicely intact. Just makes it a little bit easier for beginners to keep that in place there. Okay. Now we can start to come in and around this with a lot of color. So I'm going to rinse out. And we're going to grab some of this burnt sienna. Grab a little bit of yellow ochre with that and mix those two together. And we can let this one a little ear here. And softly blend in that shadow. It picks up a little bit of it. Little again, it feels like little tiny parentheses. Like to that too, with that bright primary yellow coming into the top of that ear there. And then just underneath. Yellow ochre, primary yellow, a little bit of that white, just doing a highlight here. And again, that little stroke just feels like little tiny little parentheses. Squeegee out and make grab a little bit more of that raw amber and look we'll back in that little shadow at the end. And again, that soft curve. Raw amber, a little bit of that soft curve. And look at that. The burnt sienna and raw Let's get a little bit of that going together. And I'm going to in a little bit of this warmth around this part of the face. And we'll look a little bit above the eyes. And a little bit above the eyes here. And then point to that color just right above the nose. And then also. I'm going to here. It's a little bit light. I'm glad I didn't want that yellow really open. I'm going to place that one into the room. Okay. It's lighting up quite a bit. It's grab a lot more light. Swirl in the back. And I'm kind of soften that transition. Be really careful around the eyes, like that darkness in there. Soft blend in between that. Again, this is that every color we just had, we put white in with it to really kind of keep it more subdued. And now I'm painting into around the eye shape here. And again, just making sure that that darkness is just really, really be delicate around that. Like, not like what I just did. I just, I'm going to wet my brush in case you do that. This is a handy lesson. I just did a little bit of water to help release that paint, lift it off. All right, now I'm going to come back in with that light color. Softly blend. Just a little bit of overlap. Soft little strokes. Just grab a little bit of water. Makes that paint more fluid, helps you work in around that. Raw and we'll keep that line in place there.
Looking at that raw umber again, and kind of working back in and around those lion colors. Soft little blend there. And I'm just going to take a little teeny tiny touch of black and just breathe off that eye. And then this one. If you don't have a setting up hand for that, you can let it dry completely and then come back in uh, with your permanent marker. And that's a really nice help in there. That rinse out. Let's go ahead and come back in with some of that lighter white. Okay, I'm going to touch that yellow over. I'm going to work in here. Spur. Burnt sienna. Wet paint to wet paint. So I have to kind of blend that back and forth. And acrylic paint does set up and dry pretty quickly. So my, uh, the, with that raw sienna, that darker brown color, that's kind of set up. So you may have to rework that a little bit, kind of come back in while it's wet. Kind of softly work those colors together. A little bit of that wet, raw sienna. And we're going to come back in with that lighter white and that burnt sienna. I'll work that in to, that, to this area that's still left that needs to be painted. I'll just work it in. And a little bit of it back and forth with the brush. As they softly kind of overlap. A lot lighter here. Go over that ear again because it's in the foreground. It's going to have to pop back out over the top here. This little section here, that lighter section. Of that fur and put more of that raw umber. Rework it while it's still wet. It gets a nice soft blend. Wet paint to wet paint. And raw umber, wet. So wet paint to wet paint. Look at that yellow ochre and we do my little ear here. So I get that coming in over the top and same front. And a little bit right to that yellow ochre. Softly blending into that face again. Okay. 
you know, we're gonna go back to it starts out. And we're gonna grab, this was our crimson red and a little bit of that white. See, and that's gonna make that really pretty, like light, light, dusty rose of a pink color. So a little bit of white to that. It's really white laid out. I'm going to lie of that here. And then over the top of the nose of that white pink. Have a little bit of water in there on the plate, and then do that little twirl. So you get a nice fine point. And I'm just going to go over the top of that nose. One more flat. And then we're going to do just a light touch of the white. Just make a little curved line right over the top here. It's going to just do that highlight on top of the nose. Just like that. Soft curve. We're going to come back in with a little bit of that raw umber this time, but let's add some white to that raw umber. I we'll lighten it up. It's gonna be a light brown, a little bit of water to it. Well, and then I'm just gonna go back and forth with a soft curve of the lips here. Take that out to the bottom line. And with that same light brown, we're just going to do some like soft little strokes of hair. We'll go in a soft curve here. And a bit more white with that too. We'll lighten that up a little bit. Light white highlights. I go in a soft curve here. Just a few little almost that. Like alfalfa looking, that's an old reference there, if you know what I'm referring to. Or you know how old you are. <laughs> so. Soft curls, and they come down, a tiny little soft curl. feels like, again, like a little parentheses. I'm going to do again a little soft twirl here. And there's just a little bit of a highlight with that white, just like that, of that curve right over the top. Just kind of follows the eye and soft curve like that. And a little bit of that lighter white fur that kind of comes. Like little tiny textures, real soft. Just barely a stroke, just a little tiny, almost like I got a little comma. 
you know, but you vary the direction of it. Oh, we can have some different ones. I don't know if you don't mind this yellow ugly now. Let's soften it so it's not just pure yellow ugly. We're going to wipe with it. A bit of water. And Sam was coming. Tell him, I'm picking up on my back. Hold on a second, moment. Again, a little soft. Be soft, like a little fur like texture. We're working into that a fun texture there. Soft curves. A little bit of that. Um, Let's see again right here in the ear and change this little soft curve of that underneath. And I'm going to grab just the teeny out of that black again. I get the black of that eye there in here. That really gives a lot of personality too to make sure that's clearly defined. And there's little tiny wispy hairs that come in. Really delicate with those. And then you can work back in with a little bit more of this burnt sienna, too. Little touches of that, too, are really kind of fun. So you just do little tiny bits of hair texture. And you can make like little tiny spots too. Like he almost looks like he's a little bit spotted. So you can do tiny little spots. Using the burnt sienna to do little bits of that. Little touches there. Just almost like little taps. It's looking really pretty. And a little bit more of the black. It's going to bring the eye in the camera. Okay, we'll 
All right, so now we have some of these beautiful flowers to do. Let me make sure I have enough of that vibrant color to do that. We're going to grab some vermilion. And we use crimson red. We still have our, let's do a little bit more of it though. We've got little touches of the viridian that we can mix with our yellow ochre to warm that up to kind of a sage feel. So I'm gonna take a little bit of white with that crimson. And I'm just gonna do like little tiny touches with, this is little buddy brush. And they have a little bit of a curve to them. And so they just kind of almost immediately look little flowers in this field. Just kind of amazing how that already really looks like that. I can do a few more over here. Grab some of that, a little bit of white with our vermilion. That kind of brings in a little bit of a beautiful like coral color. You can do like swishes of it, you know, like vertical strokes. A little bit of white with that vermilion. And it's like a little, feels like a little comma almost. I just pull down a little bit and then grab some white. I'll just kind of push that little bit of white in there too. That soft blend in there. There's bright, pretty flowers happening. Let's kind of push that into this other side. So you remove that vermilion in the white and just like soft little curves. I'm going to come in around the feet here a little bit. I have quite a bit more white this time. And again, like just little soft curves. White. And just soft curves back and forth. And then a little bit more of this yellow ochre and a little bit of white with that. I'm going to do that same thing over the barn like this and soften that line a little more that white and softens into that yellow ochre. A little bit of a curve to it. A little bit of that white. And just kind of pull the brush down a little curve and alternate the direction of the curve. A little bit of that yellow over in there too. And then the pure white. And now this looks like this beautiful, extractive field of colors. It's really lovely. Very pretty. Pink up in here. Okay. All right. 
That is really beautiful. All right, so we also have the palette knife included with this one too. And if you want to, it's an optional step. You can add some details here. So I'm gonna go to a clean plate. And let's do a little bit of some white. It's kind of pretty in the sky to do some clouds this way. So do a little bit of a fresh push here. And then you can just kind of go back and forth in your sky. It's a nice texture. And you can also come in over those mountains with a little bit of that gray and the cobalt blues. I'm gonna show you that too. That's really pretty. I'm gonna mix all that together, lighten it up though. You can kind of do some of that. A little bit more light to that. And just kind of push and drag and kind of, you can also do like a little scrape here. Like a better bandage point here. Side scrape creates that nice little texture. All right, so that's fun. A little bit of that palette knife texture if you like that. And then you can also, it's optional again, but if you want like little textures that are a little bit thicker of color over the top, you can do that too with the palette knife. So I'm gonna show you a little bit of that. A little bit of this vermilion. You take your palette knife and just do little tiny pulls with that. And it leaves a little bit more of that texture over the surface. Same thing with that crimson red. Just leaves a little bit more of like a scrape texture over the top and you can just do little tiny touches of that too. That's really pretty. All right, so I think we are done with our beautiful little Highland Cow out here. And we've had a lot of fun with y'all today. Thank you so much for joining us. If you have any questions, please let me know. And we've had, again, so much fun. All the supplies that you need are on our website at tipsyartist.com. Thank you again. Have a beautiful day. Toodles.